Welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. We're talking about welfare economics. We are looking at how to measure gains from trade. As a reminder, there are four parties who gain from trade. The buyers, the sellers, the government and anyone else. At the moment we're concentrating on the buyers and we want to look to how much buyers gain from trade. Well, the gains from trade to the buyer are going to be the benefit that the buyer gets from the goods that they receive, less the amount the buyer pays. And we're currently concentrating on the question, how do we measure the benefits to the buyer in dollar terms from receiving goods? We're looking at the example of Sarah and her marginal value for apples. And if you remember from last time, we said that Sarah values her first apple at $2, so the marginal value of apple number one for Sarah is $2. Her marginal value for a second apple, in other words, if she already has one apple, and we say what is the most that Sarah is willing to pay for a second apple, given she has the first apple, that's her marginal value of the second apple, that's $1.20. Her marginal value of the third apple is a dollar, and the marginal value of her fourth apple is 70 cents. In other words, if Sarah has three apples, and we ask her, how much is a fourth apple worth to you? What is the maximum amount that you'd be willing to pay for that fourth apple, given you already have three apples? Her answer will be 70 cents. And we use that information to draw up Sarah's marginal value of apple curve. And that's given by the blue line here. Remember, quantity of apples on the horizontal axis, dollars on the vertical axis. And last time we noted that we can read this graph by saying, for any quantity of apples, let's say two, we go up to the top of the marginal value curve, and that tells us Sarah's marginal value of that second apple. In this case, $1.20. Notice that we can also read off Sarah's marginal value of her first apple by looking at the area under the marginal value curve. So the marginal value to Sarah of her first apple is just $2. And if we take this rectangle, which is $2 high and $1 wide, the area of that blue rectangle is, of course, $2. It's just $2 times the one unit. So its area is 2. That blue rectangle measures Sarah's marginal value from her first apple. Similarly, we can look at the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple, and we can measure that by looking at the area under Sarah's marginal value curve between the first and second apple. Remember, this rectangle is $1.20 high, which is Sarah's marginal value for her second apple, and it's exactly one apple wide, so the area there is $1.20 times 1, or $1.20, and so that vaguely purpley pink coloured rectangle is the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple. And we can keep going if we want to know the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple. We can represent that by an area. The marginal value is a dollar, so we can represent it by this green rectangle, which is $1 high, which is the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple, and $1 wide, so a dollar times one, that's $1. So that green rectangle is $1, or the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple. And the fourth apple, well, we can represent that by this red rectangle here, that's 70 cents high, the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple is 70 cents, one apple wide, so the red area is 70 cents, and that's the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple. And we can put them all on one diagram, so that blue rectangle is the marginal value to Sarah of her first apple, the pinky purpley rectangle is the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple, the green area is the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple, and the red area is the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple. 
So now we want to get a different measure. We want to start talking about the total value to Sarah of apples. So let's ask a different question. Suppose I give Sarah three apples. What is the total value that Sarah gets from my gift? Well, let's think about how to answer that. We know that for the first apple, Sarah's value from that first apple, her marginal valuation, is $2. We also know for the second apple that the value to Sarah of getting that second apple, given she has already got a first apple, so her marginal valuation of the second apple, is $1.20. That's the extra value she gets from the second apple, given she's got the first apple. And similarly, if we give Sarah a third apple, the extra value that she gets from that third apple, given that she's already got two apples, is $1. So the total value to Sarah of the three apples that we give her is going to be the value to Sarah of the first apple, plus the value to Sarah of the second apple, given she's got the first apple, plus the value to Sarah of the third apple, given she's already got the first and the second apple. In other words, it's simply the $2 plus $1.20, plus the $1, and that's going to be equal to $4.20. So $4.20 represents a measure of Sarah's total value if we give her three apples. And this represents a general rule. So the total value to Sarah of three apples is the marginal value of the first apple, the marginal value of the second apple, plus the marginal value of the third apple. Or more generally, the total value to Sarah of any number of apples is just the sum of the marginal valuations of all the apples that Sarah gets. So if we go back to Sarah's marginal valuation curve, remember the blue area is the marginal valuation from the first apple, the pink area is the marginal valuation from Sarah's second apple, the green area is Sarah's marginal valuation of her third apple. So Sarah's total value, if she is given three apples, her total value of three apples is simply those three areas added up, which is given by $4.20, or is given by the total area under the marginal value curve represented by our coloured bits here. It's the total area under the marginal value curve up to three apples. So, the total area under Sarah's marginal valuation curve up to three apples, which is given by the blue shaded area here, gives Sarah's total valuation of three apples, which in our example here is $4.20. Or if we write that mathematically, the total value to Sarah of three apples is given by the integral under her marginal value curve between zero apples and three apples. And that's just another way of writing the area under Sarah's marginal valuation curve up to three apples, just writing it mathematically. Well, what happens if I ask a different question? Suppose I give Sarah four apples. What is the total value that Sarah gets from my gift? Well, using the same logic as before, we would expect that total value to Sarah of four apples just simply to be the marginal value to Sarah of her first apple, the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple given she's got a first apple, the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple given she's already got two apples, plus the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple given she's already got three apples. The total value will simply be the sum of the marginal values. And in terms of our marginal value curve, that's simply given by the shaded area here. Remember, the first rectangle was the marginal value of Sarah's first apple. The second rectangle was the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple, given she's got the first apple. The third rectangle was the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple, given she's already got two apples. And the fourth rectangle was the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple, given she's already got three apples. Add them up, you get the orange shaded area, which is the total area under Sarah's marginal valuation curve up to four apples. That gives her total valuation of four apples, which in this example is $4.90. And we can write that mathematically as the integral between zero apples and four apples of Sarah's marginal valuation, as it varies over quantity. That's just a fancy way of writing the area under Sarah's marginal valuation curve up to four apples. 
That's it for this presentation. Talk to you next time.